Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Trauma Center Second Opinion. We're back here for a story event, International Conference, halfway through our third chapter. I'm assuming halfway, because most of these are about 10 or 11 sections so far. Uh, I have no real idea for sure, because it's been so long I can't remember specifics like this. But I think we should just get on ahead and uh, jump into International Conference. I don't know what we're having a conference about, but it's it's got to be something exciting and medical related. Excuse me, sir. You called for me? This operation is amazing. Your focus and concentration, simply unbelievable. Is that the video of our guilt procedure from the other day? I had my secretary transfer it, it to an HTV media card. Watching this in slow motion actually reveals quite a bit. Anyway, have a seat. There's an event I'd like you to attend. Uh, okay. Hey, real fast. I need your signature for this. Victor, we're in the middle of a meeting. Yeah, well, this will only take a second. Victor... Nigwell? Nigwell. Maybe it's a Nigel. I'm gonna call him Nigel, just because I like Nigel from the Nigel Thornberries. Anyway, um... <laughs> H26, head of the Catechist Research Division. He's responsible for a lot of the organization's proprietary medical technology. This is that proposal that we went over yesterday. There are no changes. Huh? Who's the new guy? This is Derek Stiles from Hope Hospital. He's hardly new. You need to get out of the laboratory more often. Oh, he's that healing touch guy. I'm Victor from R&D. How's it going? It's nice. I mean, it's going well. It's going well. Nice to meet you. How's this, Victor? Looks good to me. Okay, later. Sorry, Victor doesn't concern himself with trivial concepts like manners. I apologize for the interruption. Let's discuss your trip. Our international conference will be held in Angels Bay this month. Topics will focus on the recent issue of medical terrorism. Dr. Stiles, I'd like you to attend as a representative of Catechist USA. I'd also like you to speak about the strains of guilt you treated and the steps involved. Can you do that? Well, I haven't really been here that long. I'm sure some others could do a better job. We're also showing footage of your operations. I'd prefer that you were there to explain the procedure step by step. We'll see first to start off by making the incision, but don't do it correctly the first time. You gotta fail at least twice, and then you can make a good incision. And then when you're suturing, when you're suturing cuts, you need to make sure every third one or so you need to do a really terrible suture. It really helps the success. That's all I'd have to say for mine. I'd really hope they don't show mine. Dr. Myers will be going, so I'll ask her to translate for you as well. Have fun, Derek. I think I've been roped into this without my consent. Angels Bay Conference Center. Once again, that was Dr. Stiles speaking on behalf of Catechist USA. Oh, I'm glad that's over. Thanks for your help, Dr. Myers. No problem. I think the video footage really got their attention. You could have loosened up a bit out there, though. You're not used to speaking in front of big groups like that, are you? I'm usually just too busy helping patients. Even if I had time for meetings, I'd probably just fall asleep. So, yeah, that was my first presentation. Yeah, a lot of doctors are that way, but you still make, but you still should make time to attend conferences. It's the only way to keep up with the latest technology, you know. Being a doctor is like being a lifelong student. Dr. Castle used to say the same thing. All doctors are students. Good old Greg, huh? Yeah, he was one heck of a public speaker. He was confident, throwing some jokes, and never had stage fright. I remember staying up all night helping him make slides. Uh, never mind, that's all in the past now, isn't it? Sounds like you guys were close. It uh, wasn't like that. He was a great guy, so I always did what I could to help out. Really? What's that supposed to mean? Hear that? 
I think they're starting up the next presentation. That concludes the disease treatment workshop. Next, we have an update on the flight ag fight against medical terrorism. Speaking on this topic, topic is Langston Miller, Director of Catechist Europe. I received this report a few hours ago. I hope it finds you well. As we all know, medical terrorism poses a serious threat to all world citizens. Reports of guilt have doubled in the past year alone. Unfortunately, the motivation behind this epidemic is still unknown. But, we have received confirmations that the group responsible calls themselves Delphi. Delphi? The Greek Oracle? The messages we've received from them have been cryptic at best. Their philosophy and demands are still a mystery. Are they related to other terror cells? We don't have an answer. For all we know, they could be nothing more than a fanatical cult. But, whoever we are, whoever they are, we know that they're hostile and organized. We believe there may be additional clues hidden in the strange letters that have arrived shortly before each guild operation. We received one of those at Hope Hospital. Medicine has advanced quickly since the advent of genetic engineering. But, as Guild has shown us, the disease can evolve just as quickly. The ramifications of medical terrorism are grave indeed. And it's going to take our best minds to devise a way to stop it. Though, we may finally have somewhere for them to start looking. We received news of an abandoned Delphi re research facility. It seems they've entered a small African village, possibly by posing as the MPO. I'm afraid they were using the townspeople to develop guilt. The town was destroyed and the facility has long been abandoned. But I'm sure there's something there that could lead us to Delphi. I propose that Catechus send a research team to Africa. Supplies and manpower will need to be approved by each division. I hope to have everyone's sincere cooperation in this manner. Matter. Uh, an explosive patient? I wonder if they're talking about his personality? Possibly? An explosive patient. Man, talk about long speeches. Well, a lot happened over the last year, so I was expecting that. I will not enjoy writing in the summary report, though. Huh? The lights! Concerning sounds? What happened? What's going on here? The shutters are dropping. Is there a fire? Your doctors and your temporary cures are worthless. If you would all just die, maybe people could finally stop living unnatural lives. What the heck? What is this thing? Don't, don't touch it! It's a bomb! There's a bomb! Ah! A, a bomb? Come on, Siebel, we have to get out of here! Dang it, there's no way out! We're gonna die! Someone help us! Huh. Sounds like it's over here. Follow me, Dr. Styles. Oh, what? But that's where the bomb is! Exactly. But what are you going to do? We have to run. There's nowhere to go, but... I told you to follow me. If we're going to die anyway, what difference does this make? Be a man. Uh, yes, ma'am. You're going to dismantle the bomb. I'll assist you. Oh, what? I can't do that. So you'd rather do nothing? Are you going to sit here and cry for help like everyone else? Screw that. If this doesn't work, at least we can say we tried. I... Uh, I'm ready. Give us some room. Set up a barricade with desks and tables. Everyone take cover. Okay, Dr. Styles. There's no turning back now. So... We are dismantling a time bomb, and this is one of this mission right here is one of the big reasons I really love this game, because it doesn't do this a lot, which may be the reason why it's more interesting, but it pulls things out of its hat that you just did not expect. Like, this is a surgeon simulator game that you know isn't exactly realistic in its simulation, but it is a surgeon simulator game nonetheless. And now they're having us 
take a bomb out. That's why I like this game. This is a very fun game. Let me get some water. <laughs> what do you know? It's a bomb. Blindly cutting at it would be extremely bad. Cross your fingers and listen to Dr. Myers. I think everyone's clear. Enough. Okay, you'll need to follow my instructions carefully. Got it? Uh, aren't you scared? Of course. But why should a doctor be afraid? I'm sure you've been in worse situations than this. Have I? We hold patients' lives in the palms of our hand, you know. One mistake, and you'll have to watch him die. Well, I know that for sure. What could be more frightening than that? Uh, I guess... You're really brave, Dr. Myers. Ha! They don't call me the Iron Vixen for nothing. That's what Tyler said. He comes up with some weird nicknames. Actually, that started back during my days on the police force. I was in the crime lab, you know. Even though I was just a novice investigator, I was still stronger than all the guys. <laughs> so, you were really a police officer? That's right. And I dated a guy on the bomb squad. So, trust me on this one. Let's begin dismantling oh, the okay, bomb. this, uh, uh, let's begin dismantling the bomb. I don't think dating someone on the police force gives you the authority to undo a bomb. Just saying. Ready to go? Now, we can't afford to waste any time. Let's do this. I can't tell you how it's been constructed without opening the lid. Looks like there are four screws holding the lid in place. Your scalpel should do the trick. Now, I love this. We're retrofitting... Unscrew clockwise. That's one. I love this. We're retrofitting tool, medical tools to do this. Oh, crap. I'm trying. It's it's hard to twist your hand like a screwdriver when you don't have it in a good position to start with. So we have a panel with blinking lights and screws that won't turn. Hmm. Okay. These screws are all different. They unscrew in different directions. If we try turning it in the wrong direction, one of those lights turns on. I'm guessing that once all the lights are activated, boom! We're history. Essentially, this panel is telling us how many misses we're allowed. It looks like we only have room for two more mistakes. I assume they built this in to frighten us, so we'd be unable to defuse the bomb. We should prepare for the worst, but let's concentrate on getting through this, so... Um, assuming we don't mess it up every time, I think we can do this properly. So, we don't know which way it's going to turn, we just got to take a guess and hope it's not the right way. Okay, okay, that's in the left, or that goes right. Wait, I see something in the lower corner, Derek. Can you magnify it? What's this? What the heck? Does this have anything to do with removing those screws? I think the bottom ones turn opposite, and the top ones turn the same, maybe. Or no. No, no, oh, I, I think I see. They're saying which way you turn it. Okay, so I'm going to try this. Hopefully it's not wrong. This one turns right. We only have one and this one turns left, if I'm correct. Now for the next yeah, okay, got it. So much for the screws. Help me lift the cover. Be careful. Derek? Is this what I think it is? Uh, can you recognize it? Listen to me, Derek. These hexagonal panels can be destroyed with your surgical laser. But you cannot touch the panels that are lit up. But uh, all the panels are lit up, aren't they? If we can stabilize the voltage at a certain level, it should be more clear to you. Luckily, I think we can do just that. I'm impressed, Dr. Myers. You must have learned a lot on the Force. Let's just say criminal investigators have strange lunchroom conversations. If I remember correctly, it should be here. Alright, this is at a voltage regulation device. By changing those plugs, you can adjust the voltage. I'd suggest using your forceps. The line you're aiming for is right here. Pull okay, so yourself. grab it, Press pull it, it towards me, and push it in. Okay, oh, we did it, I think. Oh, wait, no, we're close. Okay. Um, we're just going to keep trying this. Okay, not quite. But we're close. This isn't going as smoothly as I hoped it would. The change in voltage might be different depending on where we insert the plugs. Okay, so let's let's try the bottom one and see what happens there. I think that might be what we need. Hold on. 
Okay, that's lower. Hmm. That's up. Oh, that seems bad. Okay, that goes down. Okay, that's a lot closer. There we go. Okay. Let's take another look at those panels now. Ah, and there we go. See, only some of them are blinking now. It's done. not perfect, but we should be able to destroy the panels now. So don't hit any red ones. Use your laser to destroy the unlit panels. Don't do that. Oh! Oh, okay. Gotta be careful. I think they can only transfer from one to the other, so... As long as we're not close to other ones, we should be decently okay. Just gotta be careful. Yeah, they travel from panel to panel, so as long as we are really careful, we shouldn't be able to hit any ones that are lit. Okay. Ah, uh, this is really tense. Uh, okay. Okay, I think the rest of these are red. So, oh! No! It's, the problem is, is it's not a flat surface. You're doing a curved surface, so I can't tell what I'm allowed to hit and what I'm not. And it thought I hit the bomb. And I love this, though. They don't give you the ending that you normally get because Derek Styles cannot walk away from an operation that killed him. Um, let me think. Well, this really won't take nearly as much time now that I know what I'm doing. So let's just speed through this really quick. I'd normally make a video cut here and skip to where I messed up. But this one really won't take too long, so let's just uh, let's see if maybe we can get a really good score on this, since I know what I'm doing now. And I guess since I have extra time, I can tell you about this. The DS version of the game, they didn't have a lot of these uh, these things that where, let's see, this one turns left. Because uh, in the DS version of the game, they had a lot of things where they would, uh, uh, what's it called? Like they could, they couldn't do the turny things that we're doing, but they they had like they had something where you had to have uh, water levels at the correct level to keep the alarm from going off, and lots of cool stuff like that. I remember, I remember it was very difficult. I think more difficult than this one. I like this one better. It's easier and it's cooler because it uses Wii controls. Um, but uh, I, I remember which ones are the plugs now. But uh, yeah, I like this one better. Okay, pull that out and stick it in there. And that should get me right where I want. There we go. So now just be careful. It looks like we get one, I think we get one shot to screw up. That's all we get. Okay, uh, let's get it done. We might we might not be able to hit the core at all, but it looks like we have one shot where we're allowed to screw up without penalty. Good work. It's very tense. I will I will say that much. But it's not difficult. Just don't go for ones that are really close to red panels. And that gives you a decent chance of being safe. And from what I can tell, when you get closer to the end, the red panels will start to go away. Just gotta be careful when you're right next to those red panels. They are nerve-wracking as I'll get out. But they do appear to move in patterns, so if you wait until they move, you can get the panel they were on safely. Okay, let's just wait for a safe panel to hit. Like I said, it's not a flat plane, so it's kind of difficult to tell what I am and I'm not allowed to hit sometimes. Like nothing, I think I could hit that one. Oh, very nervous, very nervous. Okay, wait till that moves. Ooh, okay, this is nerve-wracking. Okay, all the red panels are gone. Just gotta be careful which one of these I hit. Okay, just gotta wait till the last one comes up. Come on, rotate my way, please. Here we did it. Here comes the regulation cord. Okay, this is basically the center of the bomb. If we deactivate this, the bomb is useless. There is your laser time. to destroy it? Huh? Aim for the regulation cord, nothing else. Well, whoa, that was a terrible one. This is how we do it. Because we're not allowed to hit any of these panels. There we go. Phew. 
We should be safe now. I'm glad that's over. Talk about your bad patience, huh? <laughs> oh, that was a terrible joke. Don't make that joke. <laughs> Alright. So how'd we do that time? I think we did pretty good. Did not approach miss limit. Rookie doctor. I think it's because we took too long to take out those panels. If I was going at it like crazy, I could do it pretty well, but uh, I, I wanted to make sure I didn't screw it up again. Oh, delicious water. Ugh, I'm dizzy. I can't feel my hands. At least we're alive, right? It's better than dying any day. Of course, I knew we'd be fine. It was just a bomb. No big deal. The Iron Vixen, huh? That nickname of hers is starting to make sense. The lights are coming back on. We should tell the others it's okay. We stopped the bomb, everyone. It's all clear now. Thank God. I thought I was going to die. We're alive. Great job there, Styles. You definitely learned from Greg. <laughs> Same to you, Dr. Myers. You're pretty tough. Woohoo! We're alive? No, we're dead. Let's hear it for Dr. Styles. I believe we found the perfect candidate for the Africa mission. You believe we found the perfect candidate because I am able to disarm bombs? I don't, I'm not exactly in line with that line of thinking, but whatever. I suppose if you're in charge of Catechus Europe, you probably have a little bit of accreditation, at the very least. Ah. We received, we received a letter of thanks from the conference directors. I was worried when I heard about the attack. I'm glad you both made it out safely. It's all thanks to Dr. Myers. Haha. <laughs> She's definitely the toughest in woman in medicine today. You should ask her about some of her adventures on the police force sometime. Ah, Chief, Derek's gonna take you seriously. He'd have good reason to. Oh, that's right, there was one other message I received. Dr. Stiles, Catechus International has requested your, par your presence as a part of the research team headed to the Delphi facility in Africa. They asked for me? That seems like a mistake. Don't be modest, we've all seen what you're capable of. You have experience treating guilt, and you defused a bomb. And that sounds like the perfect person to go to Africa. Langston Miller, director of Catechus Europe, was very impressed. And the rest of the committee voted uni unanimously. You should be proud. Yeah, but... I've never left the country before. Well, you don't have much of a choice. I've already accepted on your behalf. Give it up, Style. Once Signy ar argues on something, or decides, there's no arguing with him. Looks like you're going to Africa. We're going to Africa. I didn't realize he could be so stubborn. I guess he's always been difficult. That's what Greg told me anyway. I remember him talking about the arguments they'd get into when they were kids. The only re reason Sydney went to school overseas, supposedly, was because everyone told him not to. Dr. Castle could be stubborn sometimes, but never anything like that. At any rate, have fun in Africa. As long as your partner's reliable, I know you'll be fine. Partner? Does that mean that our friend's going to be attending with us? Our, uh... uh what's it called? Our assistant? And... Ooh, International Airport, we're on a plane! I think either that or we've been launched out of a cannon at high speeds. Yeah, probably on a plane. I figured. International Flight 36... or 326. Destination Africa. Rabori is far away. Why are we wearing our, like, our doctor scrubs while on the plane? I mean, three transfers and 33 hours of total travel time? Wow. At least you're used to it. I've never even been to Mexico, and I don't like flying. Remember to drink plenty of fluids, and get, peri get up periodically to stretch your legs. It wouldn't look very good for a doctor to get sent to the hospital for blood clots. It'll be hot in Africa too, try not to get heat stroke. I hope getting vaccinated for the en endemic diseases was enough. Attention please. Is there a doctor on the plane? I repeat, are there any doctors on this flight? One of the passengers is sick. We don't know how to treat him. If you have any medical training, please notify a flight attendant. Doctor? 
so much for sleeping on the plane. Alright, what do we got here? Epidemia of the lungs is worsened, causing respiratory failure. Fluid must be drained from the lungs to secure the respiratory tract. It looks like respiratory failure. From what his wife explained, he'd been suffering from edema from of the lungs. He was prescribed medicine, which stabilized the condition. They were given permission to return home. But stress from traveling may have aggravated his symptoms. I'd recommend an immediate lompotomy to drain the plutoral fluids. We're going to perform surgery in mid-flight? The captain has allowed his use of his crew cabin. Sterilized gowns and operating tools have been pre prepared as well. So I'm, I'm curious, okay? But unless they limit our operating tools, do, do the airplanes carry a surgical laser? Do they carry a, um, what's it called? The thing that you use to, uh, to search for, like, tumors and stuff. Do they carry one of those? And I feel terrible because I can't remember what the heck it's called. It's also the thing they use on pregnant women. Um, do they, do they have scalpels on board? I guess you could make do with forceps. Uh, uh, the big thing for me is surgical laser. Do you have a surgical laser on board? We really don't have much of a choice. Once we land, he can receive more permanent treatment. But for now, we have one objective. Drain the pectoral fluids from inside the patient's lungs. Use the old ultrasound, that's what it is. Do they have an ultrasound located on board? I, 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 I. To find the fluid accumulated and drain it. Understood, let's hurry. Starting the operation. Let's begin the emergency operation. Do the airplanes keep like the emergency green fluid that boosts vitals? Unfortunately, Doctor, there's a storm up ahead. They're going to try to avoid turbulence as much as possible, but this is far from an ideal operating environment. Let's begin. Let's try not to let the shaking of the plane distract you. Uh, I mean, do they do they keep a drain on them? I mean, is that just a common flight tool that you have, a drain? I guess you could make do, but, I mean, still. Respiratory failure is serious. We need to finish this quickly. Try using the ultrasound to locate an ideal draining area. There we go. Make an incision. Doctor. There should... There's a lot of fluid he here. There's a lot more fluid here than there should be. Drain it immediately before we hit more turbulence. We've drained. Make another... Oh, it's turbulence. Okay, so when there's turbulence, we just need to stop. Eek! You have to be careful. It's stabilized. If the plane starts shaking again, it could cause a lot of problems. We might need to stop operating temporarily until it lets up. So we need to make sure their vitals aren't ever in a bad situation, so that when turbulence does happen, we're in a bad situation. And I can actually feel it vibrating in my remote, not just the screen shaking, so I have a little bit of an early warning of when these things are going to happen. Okay, this is not This is pretty easy though, I mean, if this is all we have to do... I could do this quick. Almost done. It's really half complete, really? Is that... Okay, whatever. Sure. We'll go with that. <laughs> it's like some of these things just aren't appearing. Uh, okay, look, can we figure out where it is? No, I don't know where the last one is, or at least where the next one is. Is it like up high somewhere I didn't look exactly? Oh, there we go. quickly. Okay, okay, we're good. I mean, isn't it interesting that, you know, it's not always a secure facility that we're going to be operating in. Sometimes we have to make do with what we have, including turbulence, although for some reason this airplane includes all necessary things for a proper medical... Ooh. Apparently the ultrasound has the ability to make lacerations Doctor. if used improperly. That was terrible. Please don't tell me that was cool. Okay. So, yeah, just don't use any tools when there's turbulence, because otherwise you will end up with the patient in pain. Can I cut that really quickly? Drain and fix. Okay, oh. Okay. Um, let's see, where's the last one? I'm assuming it's the last one, because it's very hard to find. There we go. All the turbulence is gone. Patient's breathing is stabilized. 
You should be okay for now. Let's finish up the treatment. You're so lucky you had, like, the world's best doctor on board. Any other doctor couldn't have dealt with that much turbulence. It would have been too difficult for his tiny mind. Whew. I guess we did it. Oh, they're applauding. Were they watching us? <sighs> Don't let it get to your head, Dr. Styles. Were, were we having people watching us? I think we should have limited that, possibly. Oh, whatever. Uh, inflammation remained below six. Rookie doctor. Yeah, because we caused a laceration and whatnot. I think he'll be okay. I contacted a hospital near Roborio. We can take him there once we land. Doctors really are on call 24-7, aren't they? Well, I mean, if you have the ability to heal someone and someone is in danger, especially according to the oath you've taken, you know, as being a doctor, the Hippocratic Oath, you're almost obligated, required even, to help these people out if you are not somewhat inhibited in a way that you cannot do so. So, you know, if you're a good doctor anyway. Uh, but anyway, I know I know we did less missions than usual. We did uh, we only actually got through five sections and two missions, and that's because there was a lot of story and because I, I did a bit more talking than usual, and uh, I kind of like that actually. I like I like being able to talk. It's fun. Um, yeah, I mean that's what I'm doing the whole YouTube thing for anyway. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Come back next time where we will go to deserted village where I'm assuming we're landing in Africa and. Since it's not an operation, I guess at least seeing our surroundings and maybe getting to where we need to be. So, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time for more Trauma Center Second Opinion. Thanks for watching. Bye!